Welcome back. I'm Steve Brunton, and today I'm going to tell you about the Laplace transform, which is one of my absolute favorite uh, transformations in all of mathematics, the Laplace transform. So many of you have heard about the Fourier transform. I just did a whole lecture series on the Fourier transform and the fast Fourier transform. And I kind of think of the Laplace transform as the culmination of all of the, the work on Fourier transform. So Laplace, in some sense, generalized the Fourier transform to a much larger, uh, more important class of functions that you can now transform. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you all about that right now. I'm gonna walk you through how to derive the Fourier transform from the Fourier transform, uh, and then how to use it to do things like compute derivatives and solve equations. And I'll point out, um, you know, in, in math, usually there's no, uh, there's no magic wand, but Laplace transform is about as close as it gets. You can take a system and subtract about two or three years of advanced math from how hard it is to solve that system just by applying the Laplace transform. So for example, if you have a partial differential equation, a PDE, uh, under certain circumstances, you can Laplace transform it and turn it from a PDE into an ODE, which is much simpler. Similarly, you can take an ODE and under some conditions, you can transform it with the Laplace transform into an algebraic equation, which again, this goes from college to high school kind of solution techniques. And the Laplace transform is also extremely useful in uh, control theory. So the Laplace transform is going to crop up all over the place, and today I'm going to derive it for you and show you how it's not actually separate from the Fourier transform. It is, in some sense, a generalized Fourier transform. Okay, so many of you have seen the Laplace transform and Fourier transform for years, and you've noticed similarities. Today I'm going to show you how they are exactly the same thing. The Laplace transform comes from the Fourier transform. So Laplace is one of my absolute favorite uh, French mathematicians. He was the son of a peasant farmer and went on to have his name uh, on the Eiffel Tower. That's one of the things I love about uh, the French is that they revere their great thinkers and mathematicians and scientists, and Laplace was truly one of the greatest. Fun fact about Laplace, um, he was one of the first researchers ever to realize that when you're dealing with real world data, which has noise and isn't perfect, you have to look at that data through a probabilistic lens, through the lens of probability theory. For us, we take that for granted, but that was a huge deal back when Laplace lived in the second half of the 1700s and the early 1800s. Okay, so let's jump in. The big idea here is that we, we know that we can Fourier transform nice, well-behaved functions that decay to zero at, at plus and minus infinity. So I'm just going to draw an example of that. If I have this nice Gaussian that goes to zero as x or t goes to plus or minus infinity, I can Fourier transform. So I'm going to say Fourier transform, check. We can do the Fourier transform. But less well-behaved functions, so there are nastier functions out there, uh, and I'm going to draw a couple of them right now, like e to the lambda t, this function you can't Fourier transform because it does not go to zero as t goes to, to plus infinity. So you cannot Fourier transform this function. Another example of a function that is tricky uh, or impossible to Fourier transform is the heavy side function. I really like this heavy side function that is zero for negative time and one for positive time. So let's be explicit and call this time. And this is the Heaviside function uh, named after Oliver Heaviside. Uh, and it's zero for t less than zero, and it's one for t greater than or equal to zero. This function also you can't easily Fourier transform because it doesn't taper off to zero at plus infinity, okay? Now, there are other examples uh, where technically you can Fourier transform, it's just a little bit of a pain. So let's think about this uh, trigonometric function. Now, again, this doesn't decay to zero at plus and minus infinity, but there are tricks you can play. So the most common trick is to multiply this by a window function w, 
where basically w is 1 on some window and 0 everywhere else. So now if I multiply w by my sine function or cosine function, it does have this nice property. And then I can take the limit as this window becomes infinitely large. That's one way you can Fourier transform these signals, but again, it's kind of a pain. So what I'm going to show you is how the Laplace transform is basically a weighted one-sided Fourier transform for these nasty functions. Okay, that's, that's all I'm going to show you today. And then we're going to use it uh, later on. Okay, good. Uh, and, you know, this all is due to uh, Pierre Simon Laplace, one of the great, great mathematicians. So the solution, uh, and make sure I can actually write where you can see. So the solution is, let's call these our little functions f of t, okay? These little functions f of t. So our solution is to multiply f of t by some very stable e to the minus gamma t, e to the minus gamma t, that's an exponential function, e to the minus gamma t, so that f of t, e to the minus gamma t, goes to zero as t goes to positive infinity, okay? So only as t goes to positive infinity. So the first thing we're gonna do, the solution, is we're gonna take our function f that's badly behaved, and we're gonna multiply it by a decaying exponential function. So we're gonna multiply it by a decaying exponential, so that it, when those multiply together, it will go to zero for as t goes to positive infinity. Now, you might be thinking, well, we solved this problem uh, in the positive t infinity direction, but now my function might blow up at negative t infinity, t equals negative infinity. So we don't just multiply by e to the minus gamma t, we also multiply by our handy heavy side function h of t. Okay, so now what we have is we're going to define this big function, big F uh, of t is going to equal little f times e to the minus gamma t times heavy side of t. All right, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our, our, our badly behaved little f of t and we're going to multiply it by a sufficiently stable exponential e to the minus gamma t, where if I multiply them it goes to zero at t infinity, and my heavy side function, so that what I get is something that is zero for t less than zero, that handles this thing blowing up at negative infinity, and it equals f of t e to the minus gamma t for t greater than or equal to zero. Good. So this, this is the whole, the whole thing. We take our badly behaved function, we multiply it by a stable exponential and a heavy side function, and now we're going to Fourier transform big F. So the Laplace transform of little f is the Fourier transform of big F. Good. And I'm going to write this down over here. I'm actually going to box it. So my, I'm going to write down my, my Laplace transform pair just like we write down our Fourier transform pair. So we're going to have uh, f of t is going to equal some Laplace transform. Uh, sorry, inverse Laplace transform, and f bar of s is going to equal my um, my Laplace transform. Okay, good. So I'm just going to save these, and we're going to fill these out later. So the Fourier transform of big F is going to be uh, we're going to call that big F hat, and it's going to be a function of omega. And that's going to equal the integral from minus infinity to infinity of big F of t e to the minus i omega t dt. This is what we always do when we Fourier transform. That's the Fourier transform of big F. And remember, I can Fourier transform big F because I've multiplied it by the stable Gaussian and the heavy side function, so it equals zero at plus or minus infinity. So I can Fourier transform big F. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute in my, my formula right here for this big F. Uh, the first thing I'm going to notice is that this heavy side function is zero for all t less than zero, so I can change the bounds of integral of my integral from instead of minus infinity to infinity, it's zero to infinity. So now this is from zero to infinity, and I can drop my heavy side function of little f of t e to the minus gamma t, e to the minus i omega t dt, okay? So I've changed my bounds of integration because of my heavy side function, so instead of negative infinity to infinity, I'm doing zero to infinity. Uh, 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these exponentials here. And I'm going to say that this equals integral from 0 to infinity, little f of t, e to the minus gamma plus i omega t dt. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that gamma plus i omega is my Laplace variable s. That's a pretty bad bracket. So I'm going to say s equals gamma plus i omega. That's my Laplace variable. And so this equals integral 0 to infinity f of t e to the s t dt. And that is my Laplace transform. The Fourier transform of big F is my Laplace transform of little f. That's the definition of the Laplace transform. It's the, the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform is the Fourier transform of a one-sided weighted function f. It's a one-sided weighted Fourier transform. I think of it as a political Fourier transform. OK, good. Uh, and so I'm just literally going to say that is defined. This is f bar of s. That's how I'm defining f bar of s. Sorry, it got cut off a little bit. f bar of s equals the integral from 0 to infinity of little f of t e to the minus s t dt. That is the definition of a Laplace transform. And now the inverse Laplace transform is just the inverse Fourier transform of this big f hat of omega. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do now. And maybe I'll do a different color here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say big f of t is the inverse Laplace transform of this. And if I remember correctly, that's 1 over 2 pi integral negative infinity to infinity of f hat omega e to the, now instead of minus i omega t, it's plus i omega t. And we're integrating with respect to d omega. OK, good. And this f of t was little f times e to the minus gamma t. Remember, I want a little f of t out for my inverse Laplace transform. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the plus gamma t. So e to the plus gamma t e to the plus gamma t, and that's going to give me the little f of t that I want out. So little f of t equals this weighted inverse Fourier transform of big F omega. And now I'm just going to start working through what the math here looks like. Okay, So this equals, um, and remember that f hat omega is the same as f bar of s. These are the, the, the Laplace transform little f bar is the same as big f hat. And so this is going to equal uh, 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity. Of, I'm going to just swap this out and call this f bar of s. And now my e to the gamma t times e to the i omega t is e to the uh, gamma plus i omega t d omega. OK, good. And you'll recognize this is our handy Laplace variable, s. So now all I have to do is I have to change this d omega and the bounds of my integration to a ds. And I'm just going to do that right now for you. So if I look at ds, remember gamma is just a constant. It's just a constant that's big enough that this goes to 0. So gamma is a constant. So ds is i times d omega. OK, good. And that means that. Uh, d omega is just 1 over i ds. And so I'm just going to swap out my d omega for 1 over i ds. OK? So this is, uh, I'm going to put my i out here in my, in my coefficient, 1 over 2 pi i. Uh, I think I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm going to do it down here. So this is 1 over 2 pi i integral of f bar of s e to the positive st ds. OK? And here's the last, last, last thing, is that if omega went from minus infinity to plus infinity, if omega went from minus infinity to plus infinity, then s goes from gamma minus i infinity, gamma minus i infinity, to gamma plus i infinity. OK? So that is, uh, so my bounds of integration changed. And that is the inverse Laplace transform. That's all that there is to it. So now f of t is just 1 over 2 pi, uh, 2 pi i integral gamma minus i infinity to gamma plus i infinity 
f bar of s e to the positive s t d s. And this should look very much like the Fourier transform pair because it is a Fourier transform pair. The Laplace transform pair, if I have some function of time f of t that's badly behaved, I can take its Laplace transform this way, and if I have the Laplace transform f bar of s, I can inverse Laplace transform and recover my function f of t, my original function. And this works for nasty, poorly behaved functions that you could not normally take the Fourier transform of. Okay, so let's take a step back. The Laplace transform is a generalized Fourier transform for badly behaved functions. So instead of just directly Fourier transforming those badly behaved functions, what we do is we multiply them by a stable exponential so that they decay to zero, and a heavy side function so that they don't blow up at negative infinity, and then we Fourier transform that product. So this is a one-sided, because of the heavy side function, weighted, because of the e to the minus gamma t, Fourier transform. So it's a, it's a one-sided, weighted Fourier transform for badly behaved functions. That's all that the Laplace transform is, uh, and it is extremely useful, because lots of the solutions of PDEs and ODEs and control theory look more like this and this and this than our nicely behaved functions where we can easily Fourier transform. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the properties of the Laplace transform. It inherits most of the same properties as the Fourier transform. For example, how you transform derivatives or convolutions. And we're going to use those properties of the Laplace transform to simplify our PDEs to ODEs, our ODEs to algebraic equations. And we're also going to use this a lot in the control theory bootcamp. All right, thank you.